Today, we're gonna make a photo look like it was a painting. Now, this isn't a perfect effect, but I think it's something fun, and if you play around with it long enough, you can really find a look that you're pleased with. So today, I'm gonna to show you how I got to this point and how you can too. So let's dive in. All right, so here we are inside of the photo. This is with no edits whatsoever. And what I wanna do is impact the shadow areas that are down here, make this really, really dark. We're going to skip over all of this information except for the camera profile. I think we're gonna go with a vivid look maybe, um, or landscape. Uh, what I'm looking for is something with a lot of contrast. Uh, I think we'll go with vivid. So now we're gonna click over on the local tab. This is where a lot of the adjustments actually happen. So I hit M to get my masking bug and with linear top selected, I'm just going to go ahead and click right above the top of this tree line. Now, this is going to apply the effect to everything below it. I don't want it to apply to everything below it. I only want it in the shadow areas. So on one gives us the feature to click on the gear icon over here, hit apply to, and apply it only to the shadowed area. Now, there's some shadows that fall onto this building and I don't want to darken this building because I actually want to increase the saturation and the light that's hitting the building. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hit B to get my brush tool. And then with the magic brush selected, or the perfect brush, I'm sorry, Command or Control R, all I'm gonna do is paint away the mask that is all over this building, all right? So I'm just gonna do this real quick. And to see what you're doing, you can hit O. Anything that's in black, that's what we're going for. We want this to be as black as we can get it, uh, the structure of the building, right? So that way the effect of darkening the shadows does not go on to this building because I don't want to darken the shadows in this building. And it's okay if it's not entirely perfect. Um, and I recommend using the perfect brush to get you as close as you can to uh, you know what, what it is that you want. And as you can hear, I'm doing multiple clicks to get this uh, the way that I want it and it's still not perfect. So what I'm going to do is I just want to get these edges really good and then I'm going to hit command R again, turn off the perfect brush and now I'm going to make my brush size a little bit smaller. I'm just going to paint in the inside of this uh, manually. Now be careful not to go over your edges. I'm not going to do this perfectly because again, uh, I don't want this video to be too long. I just want to give the concept and then allow you the opportunity to go and explore. That's how I came up with this particular uh, edit. I was just exploring with some of the features inside of On One and ended up making this. So I think that will be good for now. I'm going to go ahead and hit O to turn this off. And as you can see, I have successfully removed all of the uh, shadow adjustments that this particular exposure adjustment was making. And I can decrease the shadows just a little bit more, make this a uh, little bit more silhouetted. Uh, now, I'll call this lower third. I'll call it lower shadows. Label your stuff as you go. Uh, it, it definitely helps out. Now, the next thing that I want to do is really start to work on this uh, building and the sky. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is reset that. And I am going to make a color range mask. Actually, I'm going to expose this a little bit. It just makes it a little bit easier. So clicking on the mask, make a color range mask, grab my selector icon, and I'm going to click right on the building. Now I'm going to lower the uh, range 
because I want to really fine tune where this goes. Now, this is where you would have to play around with your particular image, but the concept will still be the same. Make a color range mask and then play around with it until you get the effect exactly where you want it. Um, and I may need to increase the range just a touch. And now what I'm going to do is reset that. And I'm going to increase the vibrancy on this building. That's just going to help with the glow. All right. I'm also going to expose it a little bit. I'm going to go with a little bit more uh, exposure just to brighten it up. Not a whole lot because I don't want to impact it too much. Now, I know that these tones are also in the sky. I'm going to make a separate adjustment for the sky because if you look at our mask, you can see that it is selecting the sky, but it's really selecting the building more and I'm okay with that. I want the building to, to get the uh, larger portion of the adjustment right now. So we'll call this building. I don't know if I spelled building right. I think I did. Oh, well, doesn't matter. On one doesn't care if it's spelled right or not. Uh, so now what we're going to do is increase the vibrancy, increase the saturation, and we will grab our masking bug. And this time we're going to go with linear bottom. And I'm going to click right here. This is going to apply the effect on everything above this. Now, I don't need this to uh, fade that much. I want this to actually be a pretty uh, harsh transition. So that way I'm impacting all of the areas that I want to. Now, I'm going to click color range up here in the top menu bar. And I'm going to open up our mask, select the picker icon, and I'm going to drop it right on that color uh, in the sky. Now, right now we have an exposure adjustment. I don't want that. I'm going to hit O and I'm going to pull down on this until I start to see that impacting the sky. Uh, pulling down on the color range, by the way. And so I see it just impacting the sky. You see how it's not really touching the building. It's getting those tones in the sky. And that's really what I want to work with. Now, with the levels adjustment, I'm going to mess around with this until I get it to be like a little bit brighter in the sky. So that way I know it's impacting the sky way more. And I do this by changing the transition between the darkest point to the middle gray and then making the middle gray point to the brightest point larger. That's what we're doing with the uh, levels here. So essentially what I'm saying is I don't want too much of this information impacting the shadows. In fact, I want to consider it more of a middle gray and then transition that into the brighter area where the, it, the effect is fully happening. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit O to turn that off. And now I'm going to come down and impact the vibrance again and then saturate it a little bit. Now, you're probably wondering, well, Chris, why are you not using? And then I'm also going to change the temperature. Whoa, that's too much. I think maybe one. Yeah, one seems good. Just give it this nice glowy look in the sky, right? Uh, and now I'll even feather this just a touch so that way it spreads evenly throughout the sky. So now I have one last adjustment. We're going to call this warm sky. And now I have one last adjustment that I'm going to make. This one is going to be for the blue sky. So I'm going to add, get my masking bug again. Uh, with linear top selected, I'm going to click yet again down here at the bottom, make this a harsh transition. And then I'm going to come back to my mask, click on color range, grab the eye picker tool, click in a blue area of the sky, reset this adjustment, and I'm going to increase the saturation. And now 
I will come back up here and I'm going to really just hone this in uh, to a location and I may even make it a darker blue just a little bit and I may need to select a different point uh, that might work that might work we'll increase the vibrance as well uh, what I'm trying to do is get this nice dark blue sky and one of the things that you can do with a blue sky is just bring the temperature down if it's already blue uh, bring the temperature towards the blue slider or blue side and you see how I'm just adding in more blue to the overall image now this could be where you would stop if this is you know uh, something that you're going for this, this is more like a special effect type thing right uh, and I don't know if this is necessarily realistic I don't think it is at all um, but still something that I think uh, would be value added yeah maybe I do need that to be a little bit darker okay so now that we have everything going just the way that we want it to go here we're gonna go ahead and click on effects and the first effect that I'm going to apply is going to be a texture effect now the texture effect that I use to kind of sell this as a painting is underneath paper and then it's the canvas one. Now the way that I actually applied this was by using a blend mode and that blend mode was luminosity because I only want to impact the, uh, the luminance values, the brightness and the darkness of the actual um, photo. So then what I did was I just brought down the mode. In fact, I think I actually changed the mode to normal. Yeah, this just gives it a little bit more of a coarse feel. Now, this is where I left it. Uh, and I think I may have played around with the brightness. You can do that. What it's doing is it's making the texture brighter or darker. It's completely up to you at that point. So now that I have my canvas texture applied to the photo I then added in a surface blur so I'm going to click on blur and I put the blur underneath the texture all right because I don't want to blur the texture I want to blur the image so the blur needs to go underneath the texture and the way that I did this is I hit surface and you get this threshold meter and moving the threshold, if I move it all the way up, you see how it just really turns this into like this, uh, this blurred effect. And that's really cool. So what I'm going to do is just pull down until uh, I start to get some detail back into the building. Um, and it looks less blurry, right? That's the goal. Make it look less blurry. Um, because I want to make it look like it's been painted. Okay, so after playing around with it for a little bit, here is what I ended up with. And I think that this works. Again, you'll have to play around with your own particular image. Now, once you have your blur set the way that you want, it's always a good idea to mess around with the blend modes. Now, I personally, uh, now, you can just hover over these and see what the blur will do to, you know, add an effect. Now, the effect that I think is going to work the best is going to be linear light. Um, so. And that makes it really bright. So maybe somewhere around pin light or now that's a, you know, hard mix is a fun one. Um, let's see. I don't want it to be crazy bright. I just want it to hit the image just enough. And, you know, this really drives in the silhouette. If you go multiply, uh, darken is not too bad, but I think I'm just going to go with, let's go with, uh, linear dodge, or I'm sorry, lighter color. Color dodge is too bright. Screen. You know what? Maybe I'll just go with one of the contrast ones. So 
overlay is really hard. I don't want, I want it to be a little subtle. So I'm gonna go with soft light. And then you bring down the opacity to your taste, right? So this is without any of the blur. This is with about 63% of the blur. And I think that's pretty good right there. Now, the next thing that you wanna do, or that you can do, you could stop right here. Again, this is just a creative thing, uh, something for fun, is add in a color adjustment. Now, I want the color adjustment, again, to be underneath the texture because I want the texture to be unaffected by anything that I do. So what I'm gonna do is click on the orange uh, color here, and I'm just going to manipulate this more towards like the reds, right? Not entirely, but just to give it that, that nice warm feel. Now, this to me could be, uh, uh, is where I would probably stop, but just showing you that you have a lot of latitude in making your image whatever you want it to be. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit more. So I'll make this a little bit more orange all the way around. Um, and then we'll go to the blues and imp pump up the blues just a little bit more. Bring it more, maybe more towards purple. Okay. Increase the range of that so it really impacts it. Darken it a little bit. And now, you know, we're, we're getting we're getting somewhere, I think. Uh, we can bring the aquas a little bit more towards blue. So, or maybe, maybe just bring it towards green. Nah, we'll bring it towards blue. And you see how it's impacting the sky up there. Uh, and I think, I think that's good, right? The, the goal with editing is not to go crazy overboard. Looks like I may need to feather my sky a little bit more. I didn't notice the, uh, haloing happening around these palm trees. So if you get that, that just means you need to put a little bit more feather. So we'll come back to local. And this is where naming your adjustments really comes in handy. So. I'm going to click on, I think this is probably in my last adjustment to the sky. Yeah, and I didn't feather it. So we'll just go ahead and throw in a feather and you'll start to, you see how it's just blending that in really nicely with those. So this is with, well, feather is up to 60. So I'll pull it all the way down. This is with no feather. If you take a look at these, uh, branches up here in the top left of the photo and then the palm trees on the far left uh, there's like this haloing of effect going around it and if I were to pull the feather up I think 60 is what we said was good you see how that that feathering of or I'm sorry the halo effect is gone and that's all just because of the feathering so you may need to feather, and this is what the mask looks like when you feather it. It just looks like a blob of blurriness. But um, when you do that, it just helps with drawing in or making it more believable and blending into the, um, the image. So hopefully this walkthrough was helpful. If it was, smash the like button. And if you're new here, my name is Chris. I help photographers learn how to use Almond Photo Raw through video tutorials just like this. If that's something you're interested in, smash the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified when I drop new content on the channel. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.